again and welcome back to the channel. I have had a ton of requests for a video about the ALP essay exam and today I'm glad to finally have a chance to share a video with all of you guys. So a few basics just to get out of the way before we begin. First up, the ALP essay exam is a writing test taken by some international students accepted at Columbia University. It's not taken by everyone, it's just taken by some of these international students and the university will let you know if you're required to take it. Note that this test is taken in addition to the normal TOEFL, IELTS, or Duolingo test that you take before your admission. So yes, this does mean that if you have to take it, you will be taking two tests. First, you'll take the TOEFL, then you'll take the ALP essay exam. Lastly, note that a certain score is required before your studies can begin. I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. But first of all, the most common question I get, of course, is what's the format of the test? What am I going to get? Like, how is it designed? How much time do I have? Well, I've copied this text right from the website of the ALP essay exam and I'll put a link to that in the video description down below, but basically here's what it says. Students must write an argumentative essay in response to two short reading passages. The passages present differing views on one topic and you will need to state which one you agree with and why, supporting your opinion and offering arguments against the opinion you do not agree with. The passages are general enough to be answered by a person from any field of study. It's 120 minutes long. You may do it by hand or on a computer. That said, I haven't heard of anyone doing it by hand in the last few years, so you should expect to do it on a computer. Now, the next question I get is, okay, so you say there's two readings and I have to write about them, but what are on those readings? Like, what are the topics? Well, they could be about anything. But, you know, I will mention a few topics that have popped up over the years. I think not too long ago, the test had readings covering the issue of generational differences. And so I think one of the readings said that the differences between generations are significant and have a major impact on society. And then the other reading said, nah, 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 the generational differences are not important. They don't affect society very much and the test takers had to pick a side. That's pretty challenging, right? Another time they were about standardized testing, I believe. So one of the readings said that standardized testing is beneficial. Uh, the other one said it wasn't so beneficial. Not too long ago, uh, the topic was specialists versus generalists. So one of the readings said that in order to thrive in modern society, you should be a specialist. You should specialize in one subject. The other reading said, no, no, no. If you want to thrive, you should be a generalist and know about a variety of subjects. So again, that's pretty challenging, right? And other times, I think uh, the test has been about the value of inclusive language or, you know, remote learning, whether it's good or bad. Uh, something about the impact of social media, or even the value of attending university. So yes, like the website says, these are topics that could be approached by anyone from any field of study, but they're not easy. They're not basic. Like if you took the TOEFL test, you might have written an essay about whether it's better for a child to grow up in the country or to grow up in the city. That's really Mickey Mouse, right? These things are challenging. They require some thought. Don't be surprised if you find yourself writing an essay about some subject you've never even thought about in your life. This is not going to be a really easy test. It is challenging. Be prepared for that. Take the test seriously. Now, the test is scored between 1 and 10. 1 is the lowest possible score, 10 is the highest possible score. And yes, obviously, you should check with your program, with your department, regarding what score you need and what are the consequences of a low score versus a high score. 
Note that if your score is below the requirement of your department, you may be required to take extra writing classes. These classes may be for credit or they may not be for credit. And as you know, classes at Columbia can be very expensive. You will be paying for these classes. So I do encourage you to take the test seriously. Prepare for the test. Spend some time and effort preparing for the test. It is important. It will have an impact on your first year of studies at Columbia. Here's a comment I got from a student not too long ago, which kind of made me smile. He said, everyone else who started at the same time as me had to spend $10,000 taking non-credit classes, but I didn't have to since I got a score of nine on the ALP writing test. That kind of that made me smile. I was glad to have helped out. So I mentioned that here just to encourage you to prepare for the test. And if you want some help getting ready for the test, I'll put my contact information in the video description down below. Feel free to reach out. Um, I'm always happy to answer questions about the test. And if you want to sign up for some lessons uh, to help you get ready, um, maybe we can set something up. And with that out of the way, let's take a look at a sample question for the ALP writing test. Here's what you're going to see first of all. It's going to say something like this. Please read the two passages below. The authors have differing opinions about the topic of specialization. Which author do you agree with and to what extent? In your essay, you should support your opinion and challenge the opinions of the author you disagree with. You have 120 minutes to complete your essay. And so the two hours you get includes both reading and writing. And do note that you can always see the articles. The passages are always visible. They're not going to go away. So you've seen the question. And then you're going to see two passages. Now I've put a couple on the screen here. You can pause it if you like. Um, these are just generated by ChatGPT, so don't take them too seriously. But they are meant to be um, representative of what you'll get on the test. They're not too long. Expect to get two or three paragraphs. Now, the passages are excerpted from longer articles or books. So it's sort of like maybe like, a, like an editorial you might see in the New York Times or part of a kind of popular academic book. So, and you'll also get the name of the author and the, uh, the title of the book or the article that it's taken from. And they use fairly dense academic language. You know, they may be challenging to read. So you will have to spend some amount of time actually reading them. So here's one where she's favoring uh, being a generalist in society today. On the other hand, here's one where the author favors being a specialist. And as for your approach to the essay, well, you could do the essay in a variety of ways. Here's what I teach my students. I tell them to start with an introductory paragraph, and that paragraph should begin with a, a few sentences of background information that introduces the topic in a general way without stating your own opinion. After that, you should include a clear thesis statement that states your own position and it states which of the articles you agree with. And then I teach my students to write a first body paragraph. And in the first body paragraph, I, I teach them to support their argument by focusing specifically on something they agree with from one of the readings. So they find the reading they agree with and they, they pick out a particular detail from that reading and that forms the basis of their first body paragraph. And what they do is they, they expand on that particular detail, on that particular argument with additional details of their own creation and their own reasoning. So they're, they're kind of summarizing and expanding something from the article they agree with. 
And I always make sure they quote from the reading to make their point. They're actually using it. They're going to quote from the author. They're going to mention things that the author says in supporting that argument. And then I get my students in the second body paragraph to support their argument even more by bringing up something which is not mentioned in the readings. So here they're, they're bringing in a, a new detail, a new argument to support the overall thesis. But again, if possible, kind of quote from the readings as you're doing that. And then in the third body paragraph, I get my students to support their argument by specifically refuting something mentioned in the other reading. So you grab some detail, some point, some argument from the other reading and you challenge it. You explain why the author is incorrect. And again, I want them to quote liberally from that reading as they challenge the point. So they really make use of that article. They're quoting maybe a full sentence or maybe a few phrases or words and they kind of sprinkle that body paragraph with those quotes. And then finally, I usually get my students to write a very quick conclusion where they quickly restate the thesis and the supporting arguments. They usually keep the conclusion pretty, pretty brief, pretty concise. As for word counts, like it kind of depends on the ability level of the student, but I generally suggest about 600 words. Um, some students have gotten high scores with like 500 words. Some people write 700 words. Well, I find 600 words is a, a pretty good level uh, for this task. And yes, there is a word counter on the screen if you're taking it on a computer, so you will know how long your essay is. Now, if you read the grading rubrics of this test, and I will link to those down below, not only do they want you to have a strong and well-developed argument, but they do expect you to use correct grammar with not so many mistakes, and they also want you to use fairly sophisticated grammar. And they mention things like parallel structures, uh, given new information flow, inversion and fronting, appositives and noun clauses in the subject position. Now, I'm not going to turn this video into a grammar lesson, but if you want to know more about these things, I will put a couple links in the video description down below. And I'm going to show you some examples in, in just a moment. So here's an introduction that I wrote uh, to an essay about the use of inclusive language. What did I do to make this a strong introduction? Well, I've done a few things. You can see here how most of the introduction is like background information, where I kind of describe the topic and, uh, you know, the ongoing debate regarding this topic. And then after that, I, I state my thesis. I state my position on the topic, and I state which of the authors I agree with. And that's the structure of my introduction. And there's a few other grammatical things I've done here. I've started the introduction with a, a parallel structure, and then I've done some inversion by putting this adverb rarely at the beginning of a sentence. Then I've got another parallel structure here. Many of us want to be supportive and we want to express our opinions. So I've got that nice rhetorical uh, parallel structure. The introduction is not particularly long. Let's take a look at a long body paragraph. This one is about um, mental health, I guess. Uh, the readings were about uh, whether it's more difficult to maintain good mental health or whether it's more challenging to maintain good mental health in the modern world. Again, a difficult topic. It's something anyone can write about, but it's not an easy topic. So what did I do when I was writing this body paragraph? Well, I started it with a clear kind of supporting argument. So my thesis, which I established in my introduction, is that maintaining good mental health is easier today. And so I start my body paragraph with a clear supporting reason, which is 
that um, young people can discuss their mental health with, with others and are able to reach out for help when necessary. That's my supporting argument. And I've done a few other things here in the body paragraph. Right off the bat, I, I mentioned something from the reading that I agreed with. I said, as Smith indicates, 62% of millennials are comfortable with this. So I mentioned something from the source right away. In terms of sophisticated grammar, I've got um, an appositive here, right here that's highlighted. And then here I've got a long uh, noun phrase, like in the subject position. I've got some more aversion where I put rarely at the beginning of the sentence. And then you can see here at the end of the body paragraph, I directly quoted something that Smith said in the reading. A direct quote, word for word. I put it in the quotation marks. All right, so that's a look at a body paragraph. And that's how I'm going to leave the video, actually. Um, I hope this has cleared up a little bit of the confusion about this, this complicated test, which is critically important for a lot of people. If you have any questions about the test, you can send me an email at the address on the screen. And if you want some help preparing for it, please reach out. I, I'll be happy to answer questions or give you some sample questions or, or maybe kind of work on some lessons with you. All right, I will leave it at that, but uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I hope to have some more videos about this test and about other tests in the days and weeks ahead. Take care. I'll see you later.